Hey everybody, this is Adrian from Cox and the Hen Designs. I'm here to show you a sample Pinterest account audit. Account audits are a new service that I'm offering here on my website. So I know there's things that I need to fix on my own account because as I'm sure many other online business owners know, your customers and client stuff usually comes first before your own. I've also been doing a bunch of switching around of boards lately, which has majorly affected my monthly viewers. So doing this audit is going to show me where it is that I need to work on my account to get my monthly viewers back up where I'm much more used to having them. So I've created a checklist of the different points that I go through when I go over somebody's profile and do my audit. And I'll be going through that on my own account here. And I'll explain all the what I'm looking for and why. So we go over to my profile here. All right, seems to be loading slow. There we go. Um, along the top here, we've got my business header, which is a new update that Pinterest introduced in mid-April. You can have it set to be um, your most recent pins, or you can set a specific board. So I have my Cox and the Hen board along the top header, which features all my um, SVGs that I sell. <clears throat> so now in my name, we've got Cox and the Hen Designs, Pinterest Strategy, Branding Strategy, DIY Blog, Commercial Use SVGs. So I use my account for two different businesses. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. So um, I use my account for two different businesses. So that's why I kind of have two different sets of long tail keywords in here. But you do want to make sure you have those keywords in your name because when people do a search, they can search by pinners, they can search by boards. And having these keywords in your descriptions and your name is just going to be helped to have you found a lot better, a lot faster. So now we'll scroll down. You can see that I've got my website verified here, which is good. You need that for analytics. My bio, I help business owners use graphics, branding, and Pinterest to drive traffic to their site and create commercial use SVGs for crafting. Um, so this is an area that you only get a certain amount of characters to use, obviously. So trying to fit the relevant long, t long tail keywords in there is very important. If you have a call to action that you have a link that you want to post to, you could put it in there as well. Um, just making sure that you're telling people who you are and what you do. Make sure that you've got those keywords in there again so that when they do a search for you, they, you're still going to be found in their results. Um, so now we're going to move on to my boards. Now, business accounts do have a feature where you can feature up to five of your boards. And normally they would show along this top area. Um, I just disabled mine because as I said I've been moving some boards around so while I was doing that I disabled them and I'll be resetting my featured boards it's good to have your business board you know whichever whether you call it best of or you have your company name that's always very good to have on your featured boards so that it's right along the top here um, another thing is you should try to sort your boards so that your business name and any important ones that you boards you want to see first are at the top here. So looking at board names, <clears throat> so we've got Pinterest for business, WordPress tips, color palettes, online business, business podcasts, entrepreneur books to read. These are all names or titles of things that people are actually going to search. Someone's not going to search things that make me go, mm. I use that for an example because on my personal account, I have a rep board of recipes and that is what it is called. But no one's ever going to search for that in the search bar. So if you want your boards to be found, you need to make sure that you're using appropriate names that people might be searching. If you want to add something cutesy at the end or something that 
makes you you. I've seen some people put little hearts after, you know, or they try to, someone had like naturing it and cooking it and they had it after everything. You know, if you want to follow something like that, it's okay, but make sure you put it at the very end of the name and have the beginning of your board name be the main long tail keyword of what you are targeting with that board. Um, so that's very important. Now with your boards, there's two different uh, parties on whether your boards should be all strictly related to your business or whether you should throw in some that are a little bit more about you and show your followers who you are and what you like. Um, so this that's a big part of why I was changing around my boards. I was trying to figure out, I took out some ones that <clears throat> you know, like crafting. And while they did have related to my do-it-yourself blog, you know, they don't have as much to do with my Pinterest and branding side. But I think, and so when I, basically when I removed those boards, I lost a lot of followers and engagement because they were popular boards, unfortunately. So that was a big mistake of mine. So now I'm trying to get those back up. And luckily I had only changed them to secret. I didn't completely delete them, but because they're secret, nobody can see them. So I lost all of that engagement and viewers on that. And now I'm trying to recover. So while it is important, I think that you should have boards in there that, you know, do you like hair? Put a hair board on there. You know, do recipes, gardening. Insert a little bit of your personality into it because it's just going to help with uh, your target market being able to connect with you a lot better if they say, hey, well, you know, this this girl, she likes the same kind of things as me. This guy, look at all these awesome recipes that he pins, you know? Like, it's just going to help you a lot more. So make sure that you're injecting your personality into your profile and you've got some personal boards, you've got some regular ones. If there's something way off brand or something you don't really pin to that often, keep it secret. You do want them to be active boards, not ones that haven't been pinned to in months and months and months. So the next important thing to look for on boards is your descriptions. Because again, your board descriptions are another way that you can be found in search. So you want to make sure that you have your long tail keywords in your descriptions again. So here from my Pinterest for business board, we've got how do you use Pinterest for business, Pinterest strategy, Pinterest for marketing, make money with Pinterest, Pinterest for business tips, how do you use Pinterest, grow your business. <clears throat> so these are all the types of things. These are all keywords that people would search and now I research all my keywords on Pinterest itself before I make any of my descriptions. And some people do use full sentences and some people don't. I haven't really seen what way works better, but I prefer I prefer to put just the long tail keywords in instead of trying to put it into a little paragraph. That's just my own personal preference. I haven't really seen otherwise if it affects anything, so I'll continue doing it that way unless I hear otherwise from Pinterest, obviously. Um, so now I know most of my boards do have descriptions, but that's one thing that I've been working on. Some of my less important boards don't have descriptions yet. Um, but my main boards, my really important ones, they all do. So now when it comes to content, you, well, my computer is being slow now. There you go. You want to make sure that you are pinning a good mix of your own and other um, pinners content. So if we go to pins here, Pinterest has in the last update, they introduced all these new different ways to sort your pins, which is really cool. You know, you can look at your activity of what people are pinning from your domain, from your website. So if I went down here, a lot of people like the baby wipe method of painting wood signs, which is super fun. Um, <clears throat> so if we go back here to pins, come on, Pinterest. Oh, 
Well, so when it comes to <clears throat> pinning content, some people say that you're supposed to do 80% other people's content and 20% your own. I don't really fall in that range because I don't, I'm not going to pin <clears throat> other people's content way more than my own. I mean, some days there are because, you know, there's a lot of great content out there. But I usually try to keep it 50-50 between my own pins and other pins. Some people do different ratios, but I usually try to keep it 50-50, maybe even 60-40 in favor of my own content. So lately, because I've been doing all this switching around, there's a little bit more content that's not my own. Um, but it's a pretty good mix. You also, when you're pinning stuff, you want to make sure that you are checking that it isn't linked to spam because people used to be able to change the links. I believe that's, you no longer can change a link when you try to edit a pin. Let's see here. You used to be able to completely change the link and that was causing trouble because there was spammers out there who were changing the link and directing pins to their own websites instead and stealing content. Oh no, it looks like you still can edit links. I thought they took that off with the last up date. Um, but what you do want to do is just make sure that your pins are actually going to where they say they're going. So we're looking for WordPress 101, everything you need to know about WordPress. You, Pinterest, the way Pinterest determines whether you're a good pinner is, you know, they take a lot of things into account. But if you pin a lot of spam and links that get reported as broken and don't lead to where they're supposed to, you your content will be affected and you aren't going to show up in the smart feed as much as you would like to. So as we can see, that one obviously goes. I think that Pinterest is getting a lot better on cracking down on content like that so you don't have to worry so much. Now, when it comes to descriptions for your own pins, you know, for SVGs, that's not really a good one because... I just use my Etsy titles because that's the easiest way for cutting files to be found. Uh, let's see here. I'll find a blog post. When you're looking at your pin description, you want to again be using your long tail keywords, whatever it is that you're trying to target with that blog post, that item, that freebie, anything. Whatever the keyword is that you're targeting, you want to make sure that you're using that word in your descriptions as well. So in here, DIY painting technique. DIY wood signs. That's another one of my, uh, was one of my keywords for that one. You don't just want a period or you don't want to, you don't want nothing in your description. You don't want to leave it up to other people who will be like, hey, look at this cool pink sign. Because no one's going to find that when they go to search Pinterest. They're not going to be looking for something that says, cool pink sign, you know, well, maybe, maybe someone might search that. You never know, but you want to be using your long tail keywords in your descriptions as well. Now for your graphics, you want to make sure that you have compelling graphics that are clickable. People are going to want to click on them. This baby wipe method graphic is my most popular one. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but you want to make sure that your pins aren't too long that they take up too much of the feed. Um, Pinterest favors, you know, <clears throat> I believe it's 600 by 900. I could be wrong on that. Um, square or longer rectangle, but the really, really long ones, they are starting to phase out. They're harder to see the full pin on. And especially when you're on mobile, you want to be optimized for mobile because that's where most of Pinterest traffic comes from. So if your pin isn't something that can be seen on one screen on a mobile phone, it's probably a lot less likely to get clicked on. So you want to make sure that your 
you know, using graphics that are clickable, you will also want to make sure that you've got your keywords in your graphics. Um, because Pinterest is a visual search engine and it can actually read your pictures. So, well, maybe not this chalkboard one, but best site for free fonts that come with a commercial license. Pinterest's lens can actually read that and it can, so it knows what this pin is about. Um, so making sure that you've got those really pinnable images. It's another reason why, you know, you should always have more than one pin image for a blog post just because, you know, some people might be more likely to click on one than the other. Uh, lots that's called a B split testing. A lot of bloggers do that. I know I've tried it a couple of times and it is really interesting to see which one gets clicked on more. Um, so now I just want to take a quick look. I forgot to look at group boards. I believe I have all my group boards mostly sorted at the bottom where they were. Now, you don't want to be in too many group boards. I'm in the process of trying to figure out which are my least performing Etsy boards that I'm on for pinning my content to. Once I figured out which ones are not the best performers, I need to leave a whole bunch of these because I, I like to say probably about five to 10 is where you want to sit. Um, obviously you need to be following the group board's rules, so you don't want to spam them, but you don't want to be in too many either. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So that basically encompasses what a sample Pinterest audit is. Um, I usually will also go over to the website and check out graphics and see what's set for meta descriptions and that type of thing. But I know I need to keep working on my board descriptions. I need to <clears throat> get rid of some of my group boards. I need to finish organizing my boards, get my featured boards back up on top. I need to, what else? Well, so you should always have a couple of different images for blog posts or for items. So one thing I know I need to work on is for all my cutting files, most of them just have their basic image. I do have some that has a sample of what it looks like finished, and that is a very popular pin. So I need to do that more and go back and make second pinnable images, more pinnable at least, more clickable for all my items that's another thing i could use do that would really help i think get some more clicks and drive more traffic to my site another thing that a lot of people do is <clears throat> i've been seeing people create branded board covers which i think look awesome and that's another thing i plan on doing in the future um it really just gives your profile a really cohesive branded look which i'm always a big fan of <clears throat> excuse me so that all in all is mostly what a Pinterest account audit entails. So if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you purchase an account audit for your business, once you've filled out the form and given me a little bit more information about your account and what you're looking for, I will go do a screencast of your audit just like this. The video will be anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes long, depending. And I will go through and give a personalized audit of your account, the areas that need work. Um, I'll go through the checklist that I've created. Afterwards, you will receive a copy of my checklist with any notes that I've made on it for you to go over. Uh, you'll also receive my bonus free PDF, how to find the right keywords for your products on Pinterest, as well as my P my Pinterest keyword tracker worksheet to help you out when with coming up with those long tail keywords that you need to be putting into those main areas, your name, your bio, your board names, your descriptions, your pictures, your board descriptions. So it's a really great PDF to have and you'll get a copy of that as well with your audit. 
Um, so yeah, if you have any questions at all or you want to book your own Pinterest audit, you can find me at designs.coxandthehen, C-O-X-A-N-D-T-H-E-H-E-N.com. Thanks.